Hey guys, welcome to the Big Talk with Austin. Sadly, the same. We lost recording, so this is this is just about fan dome. So we're just gonna make. Well, at least I'm gonna make fun of DCU. Um, he, Peter, will try to. I mean, have a serious conversation. But so I'm. I'm. Right, I'm. I'm just pissed right now because we sat here for like 40 minutes to an hour just talking for because i was going to do our news episode because i missed like i don't know how long of like weeks of just just being lazy and not doing anything so yeah we're just going to talk about fandom um sorry you guys are not going to hear anything that i was roasting disney earlier (laughs) um yeah let's just I guess continue it from, well, I guess one Wonder Woman, uh, Cats two. There, there, there's there, 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 there's one of the jokes. Uh, yeah, gosh. Okay, yeah. We were talking for like forty minutes, and we had a whole news. We were in the middle of breaking down fandom, and yeah. So then the thing just died. So, but yeah. All right. So we're just I guess going to recap DC fandom. So basically. Ah, from the top, um, yeah. So basically, DC Fandom was an event that uh, AT&T, Warner Bros, and DC put on on August 22nd, uh, essentially as an online free Comic Con um, that anyone could watch. It's just basically like a live stream. Uh, most of the stuff being pre-recorded, and um, basically, it was, yeah, like it was basically just Comic Con essentially to advertise that for their. Uh, movies, video games, uh, any other big things they have going on out, uh, and but this is only actually, actually only part one of it. Uh, so you have part two coming up on September twelfth, where that that's kind of like I think they'll get a breakdown kind of the multiverse as well as um, kind of like more so like the TV shows as well. So um, yeah, so just I guess to kick things off again. <laughs> Uh, for Austin and me, at least. Um, so it would be a Wonder Woman 1984. So, um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So the trailer is cringy. It, <laughs> you got a good look at the cheetah's butt, and you got a good look at her face. Mm. That was very weird. It looked like she was wearing like you know that cheap costume that you would get at the dollar store for Halloween. Um, I mean, no, yeah, but no. <laughs> oh boy, Austin is just tired of the stream bringing an ending. But okay, we'll try to push through this uh, and make it quick. Um, but basically, no, yeah. So with the Wonder Woman United State Four trailer, um, obviously we got our first big look at Cheetah. So uh, obviously, this is something that I was kind of worried about, with especially, and I think most people were worried about after Cats, after the whole debacle of that was. Um, but I think Patty Jenkins went the right way um, with it, with having it being um, a mix of practical effects and CGI instead of just going full on CGI. Because obviously, um, Cheetah's a character that is, you know, not too difficult to pull off in animation and comics. But when it comes to live action and adapting her into that, then it, then it gets difficult. Um, but I mean, I was pleasantly surprised by it because. Um, like, I mean, I'm not, like, wowed by the <laughs> look of it or anything, but I don't think it looks bad or, or, or anything like that. You're, so. you're, you were about to say you were going to give it a 10 out of 10, were you? <laughs> no. It's, it's, it's a 3 out of 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, something that, like, I, 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 I'm not as excited for Wonder Woman 84 as I wish I was. I mean, like, Hans Zimmer scoring the movie, and obviously he created the Wonder Woman theme, and so... I'm excited to see what he does with the full score here. But uh, like Wonder Woman 4 was made during a time where um, the executives, the executives at Warner Bros were trying to lighten things up. So purposely make things light and funny and with, Oh wow, look all these bright colors and things like that. Cause one of the big complaints was, Oh, it's more serious. And uh, the DC universe is quote unquote too dark, which really isn't a valid complaint of anything, but like, it was, oh, it's too serious, it's too dark, yada, yada, yada. That's what people were complaining about. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, don't, so don't listen to your friend, uh, your, you, know, you know, the people that, you know, support you, air quote, support you, but complain about you. Yeah, so if you want, if you, see, if you listen to the people that watch your stuff, it's either going to turn out like Justice League or The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, it was this was much funnier than the first time. I'm just trying yeah. to figure out. Yeah, it's it's a bummer. We lost all that stuff. We were talking about Chadwick Boseman and everything, but um, we're just we're just talking about fandom. But basically, yeah, no. With Wonder Woman eighty four, um, how did Chris Pine? Wait, did yes. they? Well, is that the one? Are they going to explain about Chris Pine, no, or they, is they just going to? No, they'll, they'll, they'll explain it. I, I believe that the reason how he comes back is because of that little stone or whatever that Maxwell Lord has that'll grants any wish or whatever, like that magic stone. And I guess for, but it comes like, from what I can see and what I can tell, like it comes with like a, there's a consequence that comes with it. And so. What's um, that consequence? Like, we don't, we don't know what that is. Like, and so like, I guess Diana's big wish would be like, oh, I want Steve back or whatever. So. Yeah, because like even his uh, Maxwell Lord's dialogue during that tr- uh, during the trailer was like, oh, is there, a, I'm, is there like a comic book on the stone? On the st- uh, no, not as far as I know. I, I think there's something that they created for this. Um, I mean, we don't exactly know what the stone is. Potentially, there is a comic book explanation for, but for ex- for everything that we know about what is it, what it is, we there isn't, um, as far as we can tell, at least. So. Um, yeah, I don't know, but Maxwell Lord has that line in the trailer where he's like, oh, imagine having everything you've always wanted. And so that kind of gives the hint, like, oh, it's something that, like, you wish for and then potentially you get it. Um, but basically, yeah, and, like, with regards to the movie, it was co-written, Wonder Woman 84 was co-written by Jeff Johns. So Jeff Johns, if you didn't know, he is a great comic book writer, written amazing stories like... Uh, uh, he did, like, Dark Side War. He's currently doing uh, Three Jokers and, and things like that. Um, and so... He um, was made the chief creative officer of um, of DC Films between 2016 and 2017, and essentially we got Justice League, and that movie turned out how it did <laughs> because of partly because of Jeff Johns and his interference. He wanted to have the whole accelerated hope and optimism, and like just make everything light. And so, like, I'm all for a movie being, you know having humor being more lighthearted and everything i'm not being super serious but well, like if you're doing it come- just for the sake of being serious i mean just for the sake of being lighthearted and being funny because that's what the complaints were then i have a problem with it so yeah you don't like marvel movies do you i mean i like i like i, I like some of them i like winter <laughs> i really like winter soldier and iron man um i do like first avenger and i like guardians of the galaxy that's one of my favorite ones but it has to see it has to like it has to fit and you have to, it, it can't be funny just for the sake of being funny. Like I'm not a fan of most so like, of, so I'm like not, Cap, uh, Captain Marvel basically. Cause I, I, I don't like Captain Marvel. Yeah. No. Yeah. I figured. <laughs> um, no, but I like, I don't like a lot of the phase three MCU movies. Cause I feel like they went like really overboard with the humor. Mm-hmm. And so like, I like, cause, and th- cause people have this preconceived notion that like, Oh, comic book movies and stuff that you're supposed to be funny it's be and funny it's... cringy <laughs> no, well, no see but... people you gotta be lucky because back then comic book movies you didn't even want to see them so <laughs> just be lucky what you got just but hate justice league just say that and, <laughs> and try to hate bvs even though it has some good moments but it's it's garbage Whoa, 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 whoa. The Ultimate Edition is amazing. <laughs> the, the Ultimate Edition wouldn't exist because of BVS. No, the Ultimate so, Edition is the original version of BVS. And then they no, cut it, out 30 minutes of it. That's like saying they t- made Endgame three hours and they cut off half an hour of it. This isn't, this isn't like extended cut of Lord of the Rings. And obviously we'll get into like the Snyder Cut and everything later. Um, <laughs> Austin's a lot more aggressive this time around. I think he's just tired and annoyed at the screen. We lost. I, I, bl- I blame. You know, I feel like the you know Wonder Bros heard what I was been saying, and I think they decided to hack my computer and just ruin everything for me. Or, or it was Disney because you were crapping on Disney way but more I'm, than I'm Warner. I'm crapping Bros. on both. The Disney <laughs> should be grateful. <laughs> But you're yeah, you're crapping on Disney a lot in our previous recording. But anyway, we're let's let's move forward with this. Um, no, basically, yeah, like I'm I'm all I'm like I think that people have this false notion that comic book movies are just supposed to be fun. But like honestly, the vast majority of comics, as well as like especially like the great comics book like book stories, most of them are all dark and serious stories. And so. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we'll see with regards to the future of, like, DC and everything that they go, and which we will talk about in this episode, I'm sure. Moving on from Wonder Woman 84, next we had 
um, Batman uh, Gotham Knights, the video game. Mm-hmm. And so you talked about, uh, we we'll, won't we'll cover this too long, uh, but basically, yeah, this is, it's basically a, a game where uh, that they're doing, like, they want to do co-op and essentially Batman is dead or gone or whatever. And uh, you basically can play as Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl, and uh, Red Robin. So um, that'll be something that's pretty dope. Um, the Court of Owls is the villain. Um, great, great villain um, created by Scott Snyder in the New 52. Is it and open world? Open world, what do you mean by that? Like, you know, like Spider-Man open world type of deal. I th- I don't know. I think that would be actually kind of cool with co-op now thinking about it. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, no, but yeah, co- the Court of Owls is the villain. Um, and basically... Uh, yeah, I, you want to give, w- give backstory for that? Is that a new character, or is there like a comic book for that? Well, guy? The Court of Owls. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah, they were created by the New Fifty Two. They were created in the New Fifty Two by Scott Snyder. Um, okay. who, he is one of the best Batman writers of all time, and he really expanded on the Batman mythos in the New Fifty Two. And um, he basically created the Court of Owls as this kind of overarching, you know. Um, we're always watching. We're, we've had a hand watching over Gotham and been c- controlling things for like decades. Um, uh, and we've been watching Gotham for a very, very long time. It's basically like the story of where like Batman's been in Gotham for like his whole life, obviously. And, you know, he um, doesn't think they exist. And um, basically he like, as a kid, he actually tries to investigate on whether the Court of Owls exist and he can't find anything. And so because of that, he's just like, okay, even as an adult, he views them as like, okay, they don't exist. It's just a myth. But as he learns to find out and throughout the story of the Court of Owls, he finds out that, um, that Gotham isn't the place that he thought it was. And the Gotham City that he thought he knew doesn't exist. Uh, and it's just a completely different city that then he realized that it was. And so basically they're doing that. And basically, um, my brother, Steven, huge, huge comic book reader, um, read just about every Batman comic there is, but he has this theory for the game. So, so with, um, with, uh, the court of owls, they have essentially, um these i guess you could say soldiers that they essentially freeze called talons they have like a bunch of them essentially that's the way i can describe it for people who haven't like read the comic is kind of like the winter soldier and the super soldiers um in say like um civil war and uh, the winter soldier i guess i feel like that would be the best way to describe them um for people who don't really know anything about the court of owls but talons are essentially these um soldiers that they create to potentially uh, to essentially uh, carry out, you know, any big like major force that needs to be c- carried out. I guess you, uh, you could put it like that. Basically, that kind of like the enforcers of the Court of Owls. And my brother Stephen has a theory that, because uh, obviously, like I said, Batman is supposedly dead um, in this game, but that Batman is not actually dead. That he's been captured by the Court of Owls, and that they've made. Do they have a, a cast for, for who to play Batman in the game? Oh uh, yeah, I I don't know who's voicing him or anything, but yeah, yeah, but they yes they do. It's basically the I know you didn't watch the little trailer or whatever that they released, but basically it starts off with a, like a recording of Bruce saying that like if you're seeing this, I'm dead. Okay. Um, but basically, yeah, the Court of Owls. Um, and so Stephen has a theory that Batman is a talent, and he potentially is the boss fight that you fight in the end. So sounds pretty fun. I mean, this is all, like. They could also shoe- shoehorn this into Flashpoint in the Flash movie if they really want to. If they, <laughs> if they really want to go all out with the multiverse, they, they could really do that. No, but uh, speaking of the multiverse, that was, that was a perfect segue there to the next thing that happened was the multiverse. And so something that I talked about when I was on the last episode with you, Austin, was that how DC was going to be embracing the – at least that's what my prediction was, that DC was going to embrace – the concept of the multiverse, which I was proven right in, and which DC essentially confirmed. So essentially, Jim Lee and Walter Hamada were essentially heading DC Films. So obviously, Jeff, like I said, like Jeff Johns is, was fired from being the chief creative officer, and Jim Lee is currently the chief creative officer of DC. Um, 
uh, films right now. And I think he's doing a, a great job with that. Uh, and Walter Hamada is kind of also help, is with him and they both are helming up, helming DC films together. And essentially um, they are talking about how it's like all these different earths exist in one you know, in one multiverse. And obviously that this concept was first started when Ezra Miller's Flash and Grant Gustin's Flash met each other on uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, the CW crossover back in January. And so uh, that's when it was, this whole concept was first hinted at, that you could have multiple versions of the same character existing at the same time. And this is the whole thing with like, you know, different Earths, basically. Walking Phoenix's Joker, that exists on one Earth. The Dark Knight trilogy exists on another Earth. The Snyderverse exists on another Earth. Um, think we'll get three. Christian Bale. Um, here's the thing, because obviously they are bringing back both Ben Affleck and I think like, and I even talked about this before, which I, um, on the last episode that Ben, I, I predicted that Ben Affleck would be coming back to the role as, of Batman, um, and how he wasn't going to be done with the role yet, and uh, he was going to make a bit of a comeback. In which, yes, that's what they announced that both he and Michael Keaton will be appearing in the in the Flash movie. And so obviously some people are like, oh, what about Christian Bale? And so my thing with Christian Bale is, Batman is, I just feel like the Dark Knight trilogy exists perfectly as this just standalone, just trilogy by itself. And do I think Christian Bale- Do you want a fourth movie? Do you think they could do, you think they could do that? They could okay, just, so here's- Do you think, here's you my, think Nolan would come back for a fourth I, movie? I don't, I don't think Nolan would, would because he was actually asked to make a fourth movie, but he said no. Because he, he's like, let's just stop right there. So he's like, we set out to make a trilogy let's just honor that and do that so like i feel like christian bale's batman had just like a perfect ending to his arc and his whole trilogy and so i think he has said he'd only come back if christopher nolan came back with it and i'd agree with that i would only want christian bale's coming back christian bale's batman coming back if christopher nolan was involved which i don't think christopher nolan would i think he's done with that he's you know, he himself has said that he made his Batman movies so that he can essentially finance the other movies he wanted to make, such as, you know, Inception and Interstellar, or Dunkirk. Oh, so, so, so he's just using Wonder Bros you know, to make, make his own better movies. Well, after the Dark Knight trilogy, and especially particularly after the Dark Knight, he's had, like, all the Hollywood clout that he wants. Yeah, so that's he can that's go what to set a, him up, right? I believe so. He's essentially been able to go to any studio. I mean, not any because he only works with Warner Bros., but essentially go to Warner Bros. and said, okay, give me a $200 million budget for an original movie that I'm making. So, you know, Tenet, which is, like, has, like, over a $200 million budget. And, like, they'll be like, yeah, okay, you're Christopher Nolan, sure. Yeah, And sure, so, yeah, I mean. <laughs> we, Hollywood's going down. I mean, yeah, sure, take our money. No, but that's the thing, though. That's what I love, Christopher. Like, he's my favorite director, and he is he's one of the probably only... the most paid directors that is out there right now. No, like, but no, but he's like one of the only guys who's like legitimately creating original movies. Oh well, yeah, because it's, it's a... he's one of the few Nolan. guys who has yeah a r- actual originality. Because so Hollywood like... can't tell him what to do. <laughs> that's, that's like the that's why he makes great movies because Hollywood can't tell him what to do. If Hollywood tells him what to do. You lost him. You're not. You're not gonna get that movie. And yeah. So, no, no, I think Christopher Nolan has like kind of like bridged that gap between art house and blockbuster, like to where like he's able to make those deeper, more layered, complex films that all that also appeals to mainstream. So he's kind of like yeah. mastered that in a way. I feel like all, very, very few directors ever have. And so yeah, like not to get too much on a tangent on Christopher Nolan or anything, but like let's just make it about him. <laughs> yeah. Make something out of this. Uh no, but um yeah, no, but like with rega- regards to, you know, the multiverse, all these different versions exist at the same time. And I feel like one of the big problems with DC, well not really a I mean it is it's a blessing and a curse at the same time to where you have these different all these different versions of these characters so you have so many people saying oh no christian bale's the only version of batman or, or christopher reeves the only version of superman etc 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 and you have certain people gatekeeping what these characters can and can't be and so what they're doing like okay all these versions are valid and they all exist at the same time no one's replacing one version of the character like when when robert pattinson is coming in he's not replacing ben affleck batman ben affleck's batman didn't replace christian bale oh, it was a, it's technically replacing but yeah i mean yeah because but at the same time it was like they all exist at the same time you know what i mean they're all yeah. valid interpretations that live that essentially exist on different uh in different universes mm-hmm. uh so essentially that's what that was and essentially guess what and the 
the character that is essentially bringing this all together is the Flash. Uh, so obviously, uh, do, you, do you like the the person that plays the Flash? Ezra I Miller. I, I believe I asked you that last episode. I don't remember. So um, Ezra Miller. So I don't love the casting, but I think that he gets an unfair bad rap mm-hmm. of playing the the Flash because of Justice League. So they completely, and we'll we'll talk about this in the Snyder Cut. Uh, when we get to the Snyder Cut section, but uh, of this episode, but like Ezra, as I feel like Zack Snyder has nailed pretty much almost all the casting that you know for his DC universe, and so I'm like, okay, especially for the Justice League too. Like almost all of those characters that he cast for the Justice League are like almost like pulled right out of a comic book panel and put onto the onto the big screen. Uh, from Henry Cavill to Ben Affleck to Gal Gadot, Ray Fisher, um, Jason Momoa. I know a lot of people say that Jason Momoa isn't really comic accurate, accurate, um, but in terms of like how he looks, he looks very much like Peter David's Aquaman, um, minus I mean, minus like the darker hair, but essentially like that beard, the long hair. Essentially, obviously Peter David's Aquaman had kind of like blonde hair, but Jason Momoa, I think his Aquaman has kind of like blonde tips, I guess. But basically, you know, like. And so Ezra Miller's like that one cast in that's like, okay, he's the one guy who doesn't really look like Barry Allen does, really. Um, and so obviously Barry Allen traditionally has like blonde hair and so, and things like that. And, but like, Ezra Miller is a great actor. I think that, um, I think that he's been judged unfairly because they literally just turned his character into just a complete doofus in Justice League. Almost all his dialogue is reshot. You think they would make a? You think Flashpoint would be like the last thing in the movie, or, and they would make the movie about an origin story? Because what makes Flashpoint is because he goes back to save his mom to create mm-hmm. Flashpoint. So mm-hmm. they can't have Flashpoint as the main part of the of the movie, even though it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we have a TV show, but it's like I don't want to go watch a TV show about this character, even though these are not the two same characters, mm-hmm. and so it's like well, how is it going to work? Because you're going to make me try to feel feelings for this character, even though I haven't really been with this character and I really don't like him because of Justice League. And so... Yeah, so basically, I this isn't going to be like a traditional Flashpoint like the comics or like the animated movie. This is more so going to be a movie that DC uses to establish the multiverse. So in case you didn't know, and this is a little spoiler alert, but Flash will travel back in time in the Snyder Cut. So I think he does it accidentally. And I think that they could use that as a plot point and make it be like, okay, because Barry just realized and learned that he can travel back in time, he's going to try to do that again and might do that in his solo movie and potentially be like, oh, whoa, I'm going to try to save my mom. And that could or potentially like travel Earths or do something with regards to, you know, and I, this won't be a traditional flashpoint storyline or anything. They're, they're, they're going to use this to establish the multiverse, but I think that they could use that as a plot point. Uh, so, so, so who's who's gonna be like? Did they mention who's gonna be the villain of the movie? If no. even, I don't even think you you really even need a villain. If that would be actually kind of neat, if they somehow don't even put a villain in this in this movie, because um, I mean, I would like to see a live action of the Reverse Flash besides mm-hmm. the TV show. Um, so like, so it's the TV show. That's okay. That's like the nerd thing. How accurate is the TV show with the comic books? Because I'm kind of trying to picture my because I'm trying to picture this movie with those characters in, from the TV show, not the same characters though. But like, imagine the like, um, 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 Frost, like Killer Frost and um, Cisco Ramon, and like, so I'm trying to picture all these like their movie characters trying to see like so how act so like how is accurate is everything with the comic books like what what point are we with um barry allen in this part of of the justice league and the flash movie so yeah like the tv show isn't that comic accurate um they take like and the cw just in general they take a lot of liberties from the comics um so i I would expect the flash movie to kind of like be more comic accurate um, I don't know, like, what all they do. Like, it wouldn't be comic accurate in terms of, like, the story of Flashpoint. Um, but, I mean, obviously, we don't know. Obviously, we got to first look at the suit, the new suit that he'll be having. Um, and I know, so I know a lot of people aren't, might not be fans of the suit that he had in Justice League. But the whole point of that suit 
was to be a prototype suit. So Zack Snyder had the idea of giving these characters, such as the Flash, like a prototype rough suit that, the, that Barry created so that when the, he has a solo movie, the director of that has the creative freedom to make whatever suit they want. That kind of happened with Aquaman too, where he has kind of like just this, like this, it's a cool Atlantean suit, but it's not like the traditional like Aquaman suit, which is what that gave James Wan the liberty to create um, his own uh, Aquaman suit, which I think is a really cool concept of giving uh, directors own kind of like creative freedom. So the point that he is at and Justice League, he's on his own. There's no Cisco. Mm-mm. He just doesn't doesn't know anything. So when he got his powers in the comic books, did he go to Star Labs? Or did that even happen? Yeah, no, yeah, that that that's a fairly comic accurate. With they stayed fairly comic accurate with the origin. In with terms the, of like all the people like helping him and everything, that's not like super super comic accurate and like and things like that so uh so yeah no it'll be interesting to see um obviously you know michael keaton's batman will be in there ben affleck's batman will be in there um i think those i know i might mention this a little later but how this kind of like i said it you know i kind of predicted that ben affleck would come back as batman and how this could definitely open the door for um you know more appearances as batman outside of both the snyder cut and the flash movie well, I guess speaking of the snare cut, is it going to look like the HD like it did in the trailer? Because I remember Snyder looking like, uh, telling like, oh, we're going to have it uh, more taller than wide or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And so. So I will talk about, we'll talk about that right after this next topic. So what came next was the Suicide Squad. Oh, James, yeah. James Gunn Suicide Squad. So uh, what are your, uh, did you see like the little sneak peek that they had? What are you talking uh, about? I, I don't re- really remember, but I remember them showing off the cast members, like certain cast r- returning sh- um, King Shark, with, which is actually pretty cool. I, th- I think the only ones I'm actually really excited to look for is King Shark, because I'm kind of curious how they're going to pull him off. We saw a s- little sneak peek of him, mm-hmm. but he's like off in the corner somewhere. And so, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's supposed to be... A, James Gunn came out and said it's supposed to be a reboot and isn't a reboot at the same time because we had yeah. um, we got um, Mar- Margot Robbie returning. We have uh, Joy, Viola Davis. We have Joy. How do you say his name? Courtney. You know the girl name. The girl last name. Yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jai Courtney. Jai Courtney. No one and likes then, him. How does he get a job? Um, he's like the, Joel- he's the biggest jerk on the planet. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I gotta make some new um, offensive jokes in this episode. Okay, no, yeah, but uh, no. With with regards to, I wasn't that excited about the Suicide Squad going into it, um, yeah. but like after seeing the sneak peek, I'm actually like fairly excited for it. Um, mm-hmm. I think that um, like one of my big things that I was worried about was that Warner Bros is just trying to make an MCU movie. So like, like I this is kind of like my like worry with Wonder Woman 84, like I mentioned, was the fact that the Suicide Squad was made at a time when Warner Bros. was trying to lighten everything up and trying to make their movies like the MCU. And so what better way to do that than bring in one of the best MCU directors, James Gunn. But kind of like after seeing the sneak peek, after seeing James Gunn's comments and things that he was saying about the movie, um, I'm honestly fairly excited for it. I don't think this will be like an MCU-like movie. I think he said this will have like more... Like uh, half, the char- like, half the characters he, I remember him saying that half the characters you, you saw are gone, like they're dead. No, 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 I that's the cast is huge. I feel like they're yeah. probably gonna kill off like a bunch of people in the beginning. They're gonna Obviously, kill, certain they're gonna kill off um the um the guy that plays Merle and uh, Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I think I, I think like, he's they'll, dead. They'll kill off he, Pete Davidson most likely. Yeah. Um, uh, I think they'll kill off Mar- uh, Margot Robbie. Oh, I don't think they, they, I don't they definitely won't do that. They definitely yeah. won't do that. I think she's too popular at this no, point. No, yeah. At this, at this point, Margot Robbie and her Harley Quinn, she kind of just made Harley Quinn super, super popular. Is this is this canon with um, the Birds of Prey movie? or? Uh, I think I'd assume so. Like, I mean, I didn't like Birds of Prey at all, <laughs> really. <laughs> but You and McGregor is the best part. Um. <laughs> no, but like I, th- I think that like first off, but with regards to Margot Robbie and her Harley Quinn and everything, her suit for Harley it, looks great. It's, yeah, it's like I, it's, that's the comic book version. Yeah, I, I was just like that's very much it. Very much looks like kind of like that that mismatched black and red that like 
the, from like the Bruce, Tim and Paul Dini when they created her in Batman, the animated series. Mm-hmm. So that like her suit looks really, really good. I'm super excited for Viola Davis coming back as Amanda Waller. I think she's like perfect casting uh, for that. Um, uh, role. That's what's the what's the company that, that owns Suicide? I can't remember the name of it. The, um, Argus, Argus, that's right. Oh, Argus is is Argus in well, Suicide Cadmus? Squad? You, do you mean like Cadmus or am I? Is Argus not a real thing, or am I just thinking of the CW? No, Ar- no, no, yeah, Argus is a real thing. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. A, what it's, exactly are you trying to bring up, though? I, I don't know what you're. You, you said what was the character that you just brought up? That you Viola said? Davis, Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller, yeah. That's she, the, that's, the, a, that's the wife of John Diggle, right? Or I don't know I how the, it. Is, I don't know how it is in the CW, but I, I feel like that's who. Is that not true in the comics? I'm very disappointed in it. Because I, you know, because I, because when you brought the characters, like, are they going to bring in Arrow? Like, this is a perfect opportunity to bring in Arrow. No, yeah, no. But she's in charge of, like, Cadmus and everything. And, um, no, but I'm super stoked for that. I'm so, like, no, I'm excited for this movie. And, um, yeah, like, honestly, I think that, uh, this movie does have potential and to be like a really unique comic book movie and not just like a rehash of Guardians of the Galaxy. So Well, I guess I mean what 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 character would you like to see on the big screen? Just in general? Yeah. I mean like a character that we've never seen before. Never seen. I would love to see Doctor Fate on the big screen. Don't know who that is, sorry. Doctor Fate, he's kinda like He's essentially so. I think Marvel didn't rip Marvel. I don't. I don't want to say like they ripped him off or like copied, but essentially like he's like their their. I don't want to say their version of Doctor Strange either. Mm. So basically, no. He like Kent Nelson is Doctor Fate. He's this guy who he puts on the helmet of of Naboo or Naboo from Nabu. Star Wars. Not 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 <laughs> the helmet of Naboo. And so basically. Uh, basically and then he turns into dr fate and he's like the sorcerer supreme essentially uh or i mean frick gosh like i'm getting uh it's fine suicide squad it's fine because in suicide the suicide squad we have polka dot man apparently no but now i'm I'm getting i've 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 said that for dr strange he's a lord of order so essentially yeah, no, he's like a super, super cool character that they could like. Really is this a explore. villain or a superhero? He's he's a superhero, but okay. he essentially he's he essentially like operates in a place where like like he's ultimately there to like keep order and stop like like chaos and things like that. Like, so he's not like a he, superhero in like the traditional sense. Okay. But he'd be a super he'd be a super cool character. Although I would love to, and we're getting the, we're gonna get this in the Snyder cuts, which is why I didn't bring him up. But Martian Manhunter would be a character I would love to see. So he's going to be in the Snyder Cut. So um, that's why I said Dr. Fate instead of Martian Manhunter. But I, but I would love to see like a Martian Manhunter origin. But no, yeah. Speaking of the Snyder Cut, though, unless you have anything else to say about Suicide Squad, I think we could talk about the Snyder Cut then. Well, what about that polka dot man, dude? <laughs> I mean, that it's not as bad as cats, but it's still out of place. I mean, I feel like James Gunn is just like, you know what? He's a goofy character. You know, I could have fun with him. Let's bring him in and put him in this movie. Like, there's yeah. a lot of characters in the Suicide Squad. And it's very possible that he's not even going to survive that long. I, I, don't, I don't think like, he you know, is. I don't know. Um, um, the, uh, I don't know if I asked you this. Who's the original Suicide Squad in the comics? In the comics. I'm not exactly sure about that. I haven't really read any Suicide Squad comics. Um... But yeah, I haven't. I haven't really read it, so I wouldn't be able to answer that. Okay. Uh, well, um, smooth. No, yeah, I guess but smooth. no. But moving on. Yeah, uh, just moving on to the Snyder Cut. Snyder um, Cut. I know you asked me about thing. the aspect ratio. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, it will be presented like that. It's in a one three three aspect ratio. Obviously, we traditionally have a two three nine or a one seven eight aspect ratio. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, I feel like, are getting conf- a little confused by this. So. Obviously, it's more of like a square image. But so the reason for that is so Zack Snyder did not crop anything. So when we watch, you know, a movie with a shorter and wider aspect ratio, that's because they, they cropped the top and bottom. 
Mm. Whereas this Zack Snyder showing us the whole image because he wanted us to like see everything that was shot. So nothing is cropped. It's straight up getting all everything that he filmed. And something that I think he all he said, I think he said like with regards to like when they were filming BVS and everything, they're I think about half an hour of the movie is filmed in IMAX. And so they have that big tall a- IMAX aspect ratio. And I just feel like that someone brought so much spectacle and um, just so much a, a much bigger wow factor to it. And personally, I really like it. Like the more I look at it, the more I really, really like it because like you're seeing so much of the screen in Zack Snyder, something that he excels at is visuals. And so like when you're looking at this, you know, this huge picture, it's like, oh, you're getting everything. Um, And so something else I think that he also talked about, if I remember correctly, is when we usually read comics and comic book characters, they're presented in these taller square panels. So that's typically how we see them. And, and, And we don't really see them in these like long stretched out, you know, pictures. So he's kind of wanted to present them in like, you know, how we t- typically see them in comics like that as well. So I think that's like, it's really cool. So. Well, we get uh, Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern in this movie. Because I remember there was supposed to be a Green Lantern cameo. Yeah, no, there's supposed to be a Green Lantern. I think there are reports that there are multiple Green Lanterns, potentially like three different Green Lanterns, as in like there might be a Kilowog and Tom Array. Um, who are all two other Green Lanterns, um, and so it's it's uh, it's really cool. Uh, you know, just like there's still you, characters that we don't even know. They say there's more characters even oh, going to be yeah. in this that we don't even know. Yeah, we there's so many characters. Uh, a little here or a fandom rant. So we, I, my brother Steve and I were on. Um, I know I kind of mentioned this last time I was with you, but like we did a limited series on Phantom Rant, so you can find them on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. Um, but we did a limited uh, Journey to the Snyder Cut series, and in Chapter 5 of that series, we kind of broke down um, everything new and different in the Snyder Cut and brought in and talked about a lot of the characters that will be or are rumored to be in the Snyder Cut. Um, so if you are interested, go check that out. Um, and so, no, but like for me, it was kind of, it was such a surreal feeling actually being like, well, I'm actually watching a Snyder Cut trailer. It's me being someone who was big part of like, you know, like the release of Snyder Cut movement and like fighting for it and campaigning and keeping up with all the developments that, that, uh, went, that were going along with the Snyder Cut. Um, and so just to like, be like, to finally see, you know, that trailer, um, it was kind of, it was, it was a surreal feeling in a way. Um, I, I wanted to ask you what, so you watched the trailer and everything. What would be some of like the standout parts of that trailer for you? The music. The music. <laughs> I, I, that's actually, it's kind of funny. Cause that's in his, every trail, Snyder cut trailer that he does. It's kind of, which is kind of funny. Um, it's, he uses the same music, but, um, uh, well, I saw a lot of things from B, uh, B, BVS, uh, we saw, um, we saw dark side and we saw a symbol like in BBS um, with the, um, with the after effect of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Which uh, it's actually, it's actually Uxus. We still haven't seen dark side in his fully formed after he gets the Omega force. Well, wasn't dark, wasn't that well, dark side yeah, yeah, at well, the gating? Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's him before he gets the Omega force. Okay, yeah. And so that's him. That's why he has a weapon. Cause obviously dark side doesn't, but when he's Uxus, and so that's him before he gets the Omega Force when he's still young. So is that him with the hood? Oh, is that him with the hood? Oh, but the guy with the hood—that's the Sot. So that's the—that's like his chief torturer. Why does he look like um, one of Thanos? Thanos, 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 English, Thanos, uh, like minions. You know, like the, that, you know, that one guy with the spear. Yeah, um, that could be because the same guy did the concept. So uh, Gerard Morantz is the guy who worked on the concept art for Batman v Superman, Justice League, Infinity War, and Endgame. Okay. And so, which, he actually did the concept art for um, Justice League before any of the concept art for Infinity War and, B- and uh, Endgame. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that could be a reason why that they look kind of similar. Um, Crossover. <laughs> um, uh, Aquaman versus Thor. <laughs> that would be... Nice. Pre- 
be actually pretty cool. That that could be interesting. No, but like, there's there wasn't a single frame of the, that was in the theatrical cut in the Snyder Cut trailer. Mm. They, there wasn't a single piece of footage that appeared in the original movie that we got. What I do like is that Steppenwolf lo- uh, has like kind of looks like he has anotech mm-hmm. armor. Mm-hmm. So, it, that, well, they did have that in jo- Just or Just Just, you know, that Justice other Just League? that other Justice League movie. They they kinda, like his minions kind of had that too. I, the parademons. Yeah, I think so. Because it has not, similar armor, but yeah, similar. Like, it's like kind of like that apocalyptic design that and aesthetic that Zack Snyder went for. Kind of like that that Geiger alien design, mm-hmm. um, in a way. And so, which I think is super super dope. Um, obviously, Steppenwolf. I love his design. I love the fact that his armor kind of like moves and it's kind of like scales almost. And um, they really cover it up to his face. They don't want to. They don't want to. You know, make the well, same mistake again. That, I think that's just the angle. I think his face will look a little different. Um, because it because it doesn't look like the one that we saw in BVS yeah, anymore. No. Well, the one that looks like in BVS, I. So the thing with the one that we saw him in BVS, that's essentially like, like Kryptonian nanotech forming the image, so it's not going to be as detailed. I guess. As that's it, true. It, it essentially looks the same, but it's not going to be as detailed as uh, as the actual Steppenwolf that we get. Maybe that's why the one that we saw in the first one sucks because they tried to actually make it look like that. And so, cause it, cause if you actually put those two together, they kind of look similar, but it doesn't look good. Um, but, I, don't th- I feel like the design is like totally different though. I feel like, like the new Steppenwolf design we got, like it looks completely different. It yeah, doesn't look the yeah. same. Um, but another thing that popped out was Flash. And so I think that's what was him uh, that we saw the one shot of him. That is like him actually running back in time. Mm-hmm. And he's like in the speed force and all. Yeah. So that's one of the theories that I have. Yeah, um, no, Zack Snyder himself has confirmed that Barry like runs like through the fabric of time and mm-hmm. does go through the speed force. And like speaking of Flash though, I mean, you like at the end like there's no dialogue throughout the entire thing because i mean the way that Zack snyder edited this trailer and put it together it was essentially like a love letter to fans to fought, who fought for the movie that's kind of like the song being hallelujah it was kind of symbolic um for the our feeling of it finally getting released as well as like um it was one of his daughter's favorite songs as well mm-hmm. uh who she obviously passed away and that was why he left the project in the first place And so it was kind of like uh, that song holds a lot of meaning for both him and all of this, like the Snyder cut movement. And so, no, but like the flash at the end, if you like, then this is something I talked about like er, a little earlier with regards to Ezra Miller is like, cause he's going to act like he will be the, like, I guess the comedic relief of the group of the Justice League, but he's not going to be like a buffoon. He's going to be a much more serious character. I just push people and run away. Is that, <laughs> is that in the movie? Is that going to no, be in there? Oh. That won't be in there. No. No. And even if you watch uh, Suicide Squad, um, that came out in theaters back in 2016, um, the Flash has a cameo in there, and um, he has a little line of dialogue like, "Huh, no, no honor among thieves, eh?" And like when he captures Captain Boomerang. And Zack Snyder actually directed that scene. So that's kind of more in line how he was going to portray the Flash. And I feel like after the Snyder Cut comes out, people are going to be like, oh, wow. And people are going to be surprised by Ezra Miller's performance. He's not some goofy, like, idiot. Yeah, wow. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, what what's going to be in the movie that's from the original cut? Well, like from the theatrical that we saw. Uh, I want to say movie, original. The Snyder Cut's going to be like almost completely different. There are going to be certain scenes that kind of look familiar, but even then, um, like color grading will change. Like that'll be totally different. Like we're going to have a completely different score from Junkie XL. No we're more, have, no more uh, whiny Batman. Yeah, like... The whole, it's almost the entire movie was reshot. It, it only had like half an hour or less of Zack Snyder footage. How big was the budget? I, f- I heard the budget was pretty big. I can't remember the number. But for Justice it. League, I think it was between like 250 and 300 million, something like that. Wait, 
What? So you're telling me this is the budget of Tenet? The and budget is like more than Tenet, yeah. What? How? <laughs> How is it? I don't and read also color grading so obviously when they create cgi and everything and visual effects it's created with a certain color grading in mind and that is one of the reasons why things look so terrible because they tried to change the color grading which made everything look terrible so yeah if you're happy it's bright and colorful if you're mad it's freaking dark oh yeah no justice league is like the biggest like production blunder in cinematic history but like we're getting redemption now we're getting four hours of Zack snyder's justice league what, what snyder could be worse than the justice league that we I, got i don't know how that's even possible like legitimately i don't know how it, that would be even possible we'll no, because, laugh if it no is. but like it's it's gonna be split into four hour uh, four one hour parts which i like um instead of because obviously that makes it more digestible for the general audience too because most people aren't going to sit through a four hour movie I would. I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, and, with Batman v Superman. So I, mean, that, I mean, that was only the Ultimate Edition is only three hours. So this is like an additional hour on top of that. I mean, if people are going to watch Lord of the Rings for four hours, I exactly. think they can do it for this. Exactly. Like, this movie is basically going to be as long as the extended cut of Return of the King. It, it, aren't they all extended? Aren't all three Lord of the Rings extended? Well, they have like theatrical versions that are like three hours, and then the extended versions are like three and a half hours at least. So three and a half hours to four and a half hours, depending on which, depending on uh, which movie. They sucked anyway. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Frodo was probably the weirdest character. I don't know if it was the acting choice or the freaking, you know, writing, but terrible character. Whoa, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. Throw, throw in the fire. <laughs> nah, we went that's all this the, way. Nah. That's what the ring does. It corrupts you. <laughs> at the last second? Because <laughs> you're looking right at it, you're just like, I want it. It's like that, that like temptation that comes over you. But okay, we're not trying to get on huge tangents. Is, is there anything else that you really stuck out to you? Is you have like a favorite moment from the Static trailer or anything? Oh, wait, well, uh, well, last time I watched it is when they first dropped. So basically that's all that, can, came, that came to my mind. Um, there was a lot of detail. There was a lot of hidden Easter eggs in the first shot. Mm -hmm. Like there was Aquaman's staff. There was the name of Justice League. I believe that we saw Wonder oh, Woman's shield. Yeah. yeah, and there's a portrait of Thomas Wayne in there as well. And there's a oh, Joker yeah. card, which mm -hmm. there is some speculation that Jared Leto's Joker is in the Snyder Cut. And, yeah, and there's a there's a theory for the uh, Flash movie for Flashpoint that Thomas Wayne could be Batman when he goes back in, in time and does Flashpoint. Yeah, potentially. Um, that is a possibility. And so, because that's, that's also in the comments books when uh, he does it as yeah. well. Yeah, we'll see what they do, obviously, with Flashpoint, just going back to that. Like, it's going to be different from the comic. They're, so, I mean, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what more details uh, come out about that. But, yeah. No, like the with like the Snyder cut, like um, it's going to be a legitimately people a completely different movie, and people who aren't expecting that are going to be shocked when it comes out. What about anti Justice League? You know, with uh, you know, with the bald guy at the end of you know at the end of the credits. Uh, oh, with Deadshot. You mean Deathstroke? De Deathstroke. I mean, so that whatever. was a that was a Deathstroke. okay. So basically the. Shouldn't we have a League of Our Own dialogue was a reshoot. That whole meeting between Lex Luthor and Deathstroke was supposed to be setting up an Affleck uh, solo movie where he was recruiting Deathstroke to take down Ben Affleck's Batman. And so Which, basically... That's, that, that actually still sounds cool. No, but... I, think, I think there's a possibility with Ben Affleck coming back that we could potentially still get that. I think that... I mean, I'm not going to say that it's you know 100% going to happen, but... I think it's a possibility that Ben Affleck's HBO Max, they can make it, they can announce an a, uh, Ben Affleck HBO Max miniseries um, for, uh, for on the second part of DC Fandom on September 12th. Cause that's supposed to be more geared more so towards TV shows. And I think that that's a real possibility that they could announce that. And the reason why they wouldn't announce something like that on the first day 
is because they didn't want to take anything away from the Batman. Yeah. And take, take away hype from that. Because if you announce Ben Affleck, you know, that's why they announced him before fandom, like he was returning before fandom actually came because they didn't want the actual announcement to overshadow Robert Pattinson's Batman. And they're going to announce this on a separate day that Batfleck is coming back and he's making his, doing his original script where he gets trapped in Arkham Asylum and has to take on Joe Man- Manganiello's Deathstroke. Um, and they'll and kind of anou- potentially announce that on September 12th. So I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure, but if it does, you heard it here first. <laughs> I kind of I kind of actually want that to happen because that actually kind of sounds cool. Just that just having just having like a villain hunt down the heroes. I think mm-hmm. that sounds cool. Um, do you want to talk about Suicide Squad the game? Because I feel like I don't know how you feel, but I feel pity. Of that. Uh, no, I mean the Suicide Squad the game. I mean, I I think it looks decent. I'm not like, oh wow. Superman like, is evil. Well, they have to kill him. Well, he's gonna he's gonna die. That's because Brainiac took control of the Justice League. So, what if they say that Brainiac is not even in the game? Then Superman. I mean, I mean he was. They they showed Brainiac. So yeah. that like so they showed Brainiac a, taking over the world. It's a fake one. <laughs> No, but that's like a super interesting concept. Um, you, the Suicide Squad having to take down the Justice League. I think it's only coming in 2022 or something like that. So we're going to have to wait a while. I said 2021, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I think they're in the early stages of doing stuff too. Like they still have like, work to do and all that. So no, it'll be interesting. I, I think that... That should be a co-op game, 100%. That would actually be really interest, interesting having like multiple members of the suicide squad and yeah that would that would be a good idea to do yeah isn't margot robbie playing that uh her character in that too because i felt like that no. was her talking they about. they ha- they no. Oh, no that was an actress from one of the tv shows i believe like the animated TV yeah shows. probably uh, uh, that that would be my guess too that it was as it's uh i don't think it's tara strong I think it is. I believe is someone said something like that. It, it might be, or it might be another of the Harley Quinn voice actors, but I don't know. They usually do get um, good voice actors for Harley Quinn, so that's yeah. not really a, a concern. But no, I think the game looks interesting. Um, uh, I, I guess we'll I, move uh, to the Batman. Yeah. I, guess. I mean, the Riddler, I've been actually wanting a Riddler besides you know, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is awesome. But, <laughs> uh, there's a bit, you know, did you actually hear that? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey because really? uh, working with him on that movie, he does not like him at all, which is funny. But <laughs> whatever. I feel like Jim Carrey would just be goofing off on set Did, the entire time. I pr- I think that's what made him hate him because he's like, "Shut up! You're like a five year old. It's like, okay, you don't go over there and play with your blocks and let me practice my lines." Um, <laughs> but yeah, so what, what do you what do you think of uh, the Batman trailer? Well, see, the thing is, I don't understand that people are complaining about, you know, you know, B- Superman and BVS being dark, and uh, but this is dark. And so we literally see a guy get his head bashed in. This should be rated R, to be honest. I hope it, it's it, rated R. I hope it's rated it, R. It felt like rated R. So I, if it is, it would do amazing. Every DC movie sh- out from here and out should be radar because apparently that's the only way comic books movies can be good apparently <laughs> so like it's been proven logan freaking joker they they have done both better than any comic book movie ever besides i mean besides you know endgame but yeah like it's it's proven facts might as well make them radar and so and it would be more true to Superman's character if he, you know, like Brightburn, if you fly into someone, splat all over the wall, you, you'd be dead. There's no way that you survive that. Um, but, yeah, I actually, I was actually very worried about Robert uh, Pattinson's care, uh, him just playing as Batman, you know, with him as Twilight, you know, with all the crap that he went through. And so I was just very worried. I was like, I don't know. I actually like him as Batman. Still worry about him being as Bruce Wayne. I don't mm-hmm. see him as Bruce Wayne. Like when we saw him as that, as that, uh, when we saw him as Bruce Wayne in that hall, um, like the t- court hall and whatever. Uh, it's just like, I don't, I don't see it. I, I really, I just really don't. And he's, I think he's supposed to be like a younger Bruce Wayne. 
and so he's so he's just supposed to have that young look to him and it's just just feels off from what we all have been seeing on the big screen with you know with older Wayne and all that mm. yeah like I think this will be a very unique and very new take on Bruce Wayne. I'm like on Batman I'm still not sold on Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne that was always my biggest concern I was like okay I can see him as Batman I can see him pulling off a convincing Batman which I was re- uh, reaffirmed by by the uh, by the little Batman teaser but like in terms of Bruce Wayne I still don't see it yet. Like Robert Pattinson just doesn't look like Bruce Wayne. From he the doesn't. Comics. He doesn't look like a um, rich uh, playboy. He just doesn't look like that. And so and it's not like Ben Affleck looked like that too. But he had. He just had that charisma look to him. Yeah. No. Like no. Ben, ben Affleck looks almost like identical to like Bruce Wayne, how he is usually drawn in comics. Yeah. Like, yeah, but no, with regards to, I know you mentioned like the whole dark thing and like rated R and stuff like for me and with regards to like that and like the Batman and everything and like his brutality, it's like, it'll be interesting to see what complaints are consistent across like say complaints that Batfleck got in BVS and now Robert Pattinson and what double standards there are because he doesn't kill, but we saw him (laughs) kill. So he does kill. No, because it'll be interesting. Will people, if Robert Pattinson's Batman com- like does kill, will people actually complain about it? Because every single Batman in cinematic history has killed, except for George Clooney. Yet Ben Affleck's Batman is the only one who got like. You Joker know. doesn't kill. It's not like- <laughs> no, but Ben Affleck's Batman was the only one who got flack for that. Like Ben Affleck's Batman was com- was like people complained that his Batman was too dark and didn't, that he was too brutal. Didn't but Christian, yet, did Christian Bale kill someone? Yeah, no, he 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 killed people too. Um, no, but like Ben Affleck's Batman, he um, was like his Batman was complained about for being too dark and oh. Um, I got you. Know, hey, hey, Sonny, do you want a bat tattoo? Come over here. <laughs> no, and like d- too brutal, but yet like Robert Pattinson's Batman is clearly going in that direction as well, and yet almost no one is complaining about it. So it's like those double standards that like, okay, why were you guys complaining about this? It's probably this- because he almost said the line. He almost said, I'm Visions. He, he basically yeah. said the line, but he, I think that's why people are not complaining. That like, I personally love the brutality that he showed, but it's like all those people who complained about Ben Affleck's Batman and stuff. It's like, where, why aren't you guys complaining now? Because it's like a double standard. It's like, okay, did you guys just hate Zack Snyder? Did you guys just hate the DCEU? Like, what was it? And in regards to your complaint about like Superman and stuff, like obviously like people have that view of, Su- and like this is one of the reasons why the DCEU was, com- was criticized for being like dark. Obviously they didn't adhere to like the way the things the MC was doing things but like the reason like because man of steel really isn't dark honestly um but like well, people it's have much this, more it's much more realistic it's much more serious it's, a much, se- yeah, it's serious it's, it's, it's much it takes itself serious um but like people have this idealized version of superman that's like the christopher reeve version and so not not, they, not the they, superman return version not that one <laughs> well i mean superman returns for brandon ralph superman is, is it, essentially is, supposed to be christopher yeah, reeve superman. yeah that's why i figured no yeah. yeah but basically um they people like just don't like view superman in that through that one lens that they see christopher reeve through and so even though henry cavill superman is much closer to the comics like david williams who's a who's a comic book artist actually talked about this how um henry cavill superman and under Zack snyder is much more is like the most comic accurate superman we've ever had on the big screen much more even than christopher reeve superman but yet people are just get all caught up in Oh, just that one version of Christopher Reeve. They, people don't read comics. People have a very superficial and service level understanding of the character of Superman. And so, obviously, there are ex- like very dark and serious Superman stories, such as like Kingdom Come, or I mean, uh, Superman for Tomorrow, or Birthright. He has dark moments, and even like Superman Earth One, which was the biggest inspiration for Man of Steel, is a very you know much more dark and serious Superman story. And so it's kind of just one of those things where like, yeah, people complain about the darkness of DC. I hope people, you know, stop doing that. Although I feel like I would not be surprised if people. Uh, there's going to you know, be always a, I, there's going to be a mom out there that will complain about it. So. No, I, I hope this doesn't happen, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if people completely laud the Batman for being, you know, dark and gritty and stuff like that. Uh, which I mean, I'm sure people, st- some people will still complain, but I feel like it'll be much less than say like Ben Affleck and like BVS and things like that. But um, it'll and just watch those same people complain about the Snyder Cut being too serious, 
even though it's not going to be as dark as BVS or anything, but it obviously will take itself very seriously and things like that. What do you that. think of the Kameo Beal, the cheap Batmobile? Oh, the, uh, honestly, so it's not one of my, I don't like, I, per, okay, so here's my thing with it. I, um, I like it for a year two Batman. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of like, oh, the design like that that's the direction um, with it. And I like that it's very unique and that mm-hmm. they're doing something different with this Batman because you can obviously tell that Robert Pattinson's Batman is, is going to be more along the realistic you know grounded lens that like kind of Christopher Nolan took with Batman not like that straight up like comic book craziness that this, like Zack Snyder took with Ben Affleck's Batman. It's supposed to be also mm-hmm. a detective movie and and he's supposed to be actually. This is supposed to be like a brand. He's supposed to be new at this, I think. As yeah, well. like a year he's, two. Yeah, something like that. And so, and if it does well, I wouldn't mind to see more of his. If it does, if it if it if it blows me out, I, w- I would actually would like to see more of that because I always want to see more of the detective side of Batman. Because every because I think the closest thing to a detective Batman was probably Christian Bale's. I mean, all the, like, Christian Bale and Ben Affleck both did do detective work in their Batman films, but it wasn't the focus of it. it was, yeah, it wasn't the focus. Yeah, and like so, both, with, they, with someone, with your villain going to be, like, with the Riddler, it's going to be a lot of detective work, and it's just going to be, like, okay, well, it's time to use my brain, and I think that's what people are going to be complaining about. It's like, I don't want to use my brain. It's supposed to be a comic book movie, right? Where's the big explosions? <laughs> and so... Yeah, like I think with the like and allegedly the Batman movie is also like fairly low budget, like 120 million or something like that. Oh yeah, because I mean, with the their, folks with most their... more on the detective work, and there's not as much like CGI involved, obviously. Yeah. So because of that, I think they're already basically planning on like a trilogy. Because and like, I, with and the there's supposed to be a Joker in this movie as well. Uh, I don't think there's a Joker. I yet. heard I heard that there was gonna like a rumor or something. I mean, like Joker maybe, would show up. Maybe introduced later in the trilogy, but I don't. Not in this movie. That's supposed to be a trilogy. Yeah, that, that's what they're planning right now, as far as I know. I want to hear about the one movie. Interesting. Yeah, so um, I think they're already planning a trilogy. Obviously, like you just focus on the one movie and making the first movie and making that good. And I have yeah. confidence in Matt Reeves. Robert Pattinson's a really good actor. Um, well, I mean, if you don't make the first movie good, you're, you lost me. So. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it'll be it'll be interesting to uh, see where they go with this. Like, obviously, like like I mentioned, it is more grounded. It's like nothing that we've really seen from Batman. Like, it's very it looks very unique and different from what we got before, and that is part of what helps the character to not get stuck into oh, just one interpretation the way that Superman unfortunately has been viewed with, oh, Christopher Reeve is the one version. And it's because Superman is the, I don't want to get too much off on a tangent here, but Superman is the one comic book character that's treated like a movie character. But there can't be, oh, different versions of the character, like Henry Cavill's version and Christopher Reeve's version. But it's just like, oh, with Batman, you can have Christian Bale and Ben Affleck and Robert Pattinson and Adam West and Michael Keaton and all these different versions of the character. And no one's really going to complain about that. But then the instant that you say, oh, yeah, Superman has, doesn't have his trunks on the outside and smiling all the time. Oh, you then, oh, he's not a good Superman. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I just realized, say, um, thinking of that, it's like, so with the snare cut coming out, does that mean now there's two different timelines of the Justice League? So if they people actually like just the League, they could continue on with that one say, somehow in some way. It's like they have two different timelines. Like, so it's like, I don't know. I, that just I, came to my head. I think what I think Zach, Zach Snyder mentioned in an interview that his, um, at, at least as of now, that his the, the Snyder cut is separate. Mm-hmm. So it's it's continuing the story set up by Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, but the stories that are following it, such as Wonder Woman eighty four like, and Squad. like the Suicide Squad and Shazam and these, so these, those movies don't really fall in line with his, with his continuity because the Snyder Cut is, people are going to be, this is going to set up so much world building for the DC universe. It's, it's going well, to be TV Snyderverse. shows. So. And so like, no, but like regarding like even that though, like a lot of people have this view of like, oh, the Snyder Cut quote unquote isn't canon or something, but that's the thing. It doesn't need to be. But no, like with the multiverse, technically everything is canon and essentially like, People have this mentality like, oh, but what about like Elseworld? But technically, 
everything, every single version of live so, action, so anything that, is Elseworld. So, so that means Supergirl, you know, you know that crappy, you know, <laughs> other, is that canon? Okay, no, okay, no, but no, but that's what I'm saying. No, everything is Elseworld. Everything is an Elseworld story from the CW to the Dark Knight trilogy to Christopher Reeve Superman to the DCEU to the Snyderverse, like whatever you want to call it. Like the MCU. Batman and Robin? Yes, all, all, everything. So unless you were oh. part of the main, con- put, unless you were part of the main, like, continuity of comics in either DC or Marvel, Technically, you are an Elseworld story. Let's get a sequel like, to Batman and Robin then. Get get get. Uh, George Clo- George Clooney would not be down for that. He like has apologized for playing Batman. Yeah, he made jokes uh, about hey, just put me in a bat suit with nipples. So, uh, no, but um. No, but like everything is an Elseworld story. The MCU is an Elseworld story. The, X, the Fox X Men movies are an Elseworld story. Like everything is Elseworld unless you're part of that main canon. And it doesn't really matter. These are all like if you're making great movies, you're making great movies, you're making great content, great TV shows, whatever, I, I, great I comics. Would choose your words carefully. <laughs> Some of the greatest. Are you afraid that Disney or Warner Bros. is going to like shut Dis- it down? I, just... I feel like Disney should buy the DC. Oh please, I, no. oh, please no. Oh, please no. Please no. Please no. Oh, please no. They, they messed up. They had their chance. Please, unless they, unless no. they, unless they can make these next 10 movies great, then I'll say no. But okay. until then. No, but he, like, here's the thing, like, and not like people might get so kind of like, oh, but I don't want blah, blah, blah to be elsewhere. Just going on my last point. But like, but, like, some of the greatest comic storylines are Elseworld stories, like whether it's something like Kingdom Come or The Dark Knight Returns or All-Star Superman. All, like, all these stories are, like, all three of those are, like, incredible Elseworld stories, like, Elseworld stories that, like, aren't part of the main continuity of DC Comics and whatever. So, like, I mean, people are just, like, it's a multiverse. All these different versions of these different characters, same for, like, even, like, animation. If you know what I mean, like if do you do you like watch DC animation? Uh, a little, not really. No, but like with regards to like uh, DC animation, like they're like they'll have like at the same time have like three or four different continuities running at the same time, and like di- all these different versions of Batman that all like, that are all existing. So that's like essentially the concept they're going for with DC films. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, is there anything else that you really wanted to talk about, like the Batman or, or anything? Um, let's see. What did, I, what, what did they talk about else at Fandom? I mean, they were like small stuff like Shazam and Aquaman, but those are, they like really didn't talk about much mm-hmm. um, regarding those movies. Like, I will say this regarding like the Batman and stuff. Um, like, I'm really excited to see Paul Dano as Riddler. Uh, I think that would be. Oh, that's really what was, I was trying to figure out as well. Who they cast as the Riddler? It's like yeah, they got Paul Jim Day. Carrey. I don't no, know if Jim I Carrey think, would. And then Jeffrey Wright is like I think he could be a really good Gordon, and then Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Like, and obviously you see there, and I, there is this like you see that their suits that they have are kind of like rough. Like, I'm not really a fan of Robert Pattinson's cowl. Like, I think I like the kind of like the armored suit look. But I don't. I'm not a fan of the cow. But it's kind. Of, it's. I mean, it's understandable that. Uh, like I mean, like that he is in a. You know, has like a rough suit and everything. But at the same time, it does look kind of weird to me with like, the cow. We never kind of, saw. We never seen hit, like any Batman character like on a big screen like this before. So it's, of course it's going to be a little. Yeah. Weird. So like I mean, it's just because in a way like you, you see like his boots and his pants are, look kind of cheap. And stuff, and like then the then his actual armored suit looks really cool, and then the cowl looks cheap again. But in a way, I guess he's still like building and making his suit. It's also kind of weird to me that his cowl looks kind of like a helmet and looks like Daredevil. Well, yeah, it's because oh. it's supposed to be. It's actually because, well, like I don't know, I don't know the actual behind the making of his helmet, but like in the comic books, that thing is should be like difficult to take off because it's like ki- like what's the word for it. Um, they use like carbon fiber or something like carbon that. carbon fiber like kevlar yeah i think so like something like that uh, so well, it's i don't i don't, it's I don't think like really... is made like that like i know like they talked about like with ben affleck's bvs suit like and talk about like basically in concept it has it has like four layers of kevlar on it that's why and like it has like a reinforced 
um, like gloves and cow. So like obviously he took a bullet to the head and he was fine. He was able to like block off um, like knives. And, the, and then you even in the, in the Snydica trailer, you saw him blocking parademon blasts with his, you know, with his uh, arm because uh, his gloves are, like reinforced and everything. But then obviously like in the warehouse scene, you saw him get like stabbed in the arm, in the like shoulder with a knife. And so obviously that can kind of penetrate like his suit, but then like he has got reinforced areas. Yeah. And that's um, like the thing I do want, what, what you mentioned the trilogy. So if they're going to do a trilogy, I do not want to see the Batmobile until the, until the, like the end of the third movie. Cause I like, want like I a want, spec'd out Batmobile. Yeah. So like, I want to see like a progression of him getting better mm-hmm. equi- like equipment like Iron Man did. Yeah. But I mean, Iron Man's rich, and so he's like able to make all the stuff that he wants. I, I mean, I, Bruce I Wayne that, is also rich, but yeah, I no. think I think it would be much better to show him grow as a character. It's like, okay, wait, you know what? I don't really know how to fight, so I need to learn, and like, so and then take it slow and take it like one step at a time, and so. Yeah, uh, I mean, I. I th- I know there is a report that he supposedly gets a new suit in um, the Batman that like, obviously this is kind of his rough suit and then he'll get like another one. Like I think this one gets destroyed and then he gets another one. Um, so we'll, I guess we'll see that potentially. Well, and... it'll, it'll just be a good final act in the uh, trilogy if they just, you know, had him stay with the suit throughout the whole entire trilogy. Well, I feel the- like they, like, he upgrade the suit as it goes on. You, yeah. know, he, you know, like, he'll get a new one, this one, and then that suit stays consistent through maybe even the second, the whole second movie, and then in the third one, he gets, like, another upgrade or something. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll see what direction they take. But ultimately, I'm excited for this. This is my second most, this is my second highest anticipated comic book movie right now, with the Snyder Cut being number one. That's like, the Snyder Cut's like my most anticipated movie of all time. So. What would you like them to do in the trilogy? Like, for the next two movies, what would you like them to do? I would like them to potentially introduce, I mean, I would, I don't, I don't want them to introduce the Joker until maybe like the third one. Mm-hmm. Or maybe if they were to introduce uh, in the third one or whatever, or maybe have, gosh, because like that's the thing. Like, I don't feel like they needed to. They would need to have a Joker because like we have so much saturation and so much of the Joker and like Batman and Harley Quinn even now that like DC is really trying to milk. And so like I'd love to see like new villains. Like I'd love to see them like really delve into potentially Two Face. Like yeah, no, they're doing Penguin and like they're doing the Riddler. I look potentially if they were able. Oh, to... Oh, that's right. That's pa- no, that's why I was thinking of it. Penguin's supposed to be in the Batman, not Colin Joker. Farrell. Yeah, yeah, Colin Farrell. Yeah, um, which great, great prosthetics for that. Like he's like basically unrecognizable. But um, no, like I, especially since this is more grounded too. Like this isn't like the co- like I mentioned. This isn't like that co- pure comic book type thing like Ben Affleck's Batman is. Mm-hmm. We're like, it's, supposed so to be, it's supposed to be like the... The Dark Knight uh, trilogy, like well, more so grounded. What's the, what's the one that had Penguin back in... Oh, uh, Batman Returns? Batman Returns. That with is, Michael Keaton and stuff. Yeah. No, but like... So like, I don't see them being able to do like with how, like with the world that they've set up, I don't see them being able to do something like, you know, Clayface or something. Like I could see them like doing something really awesome with like the Court of Owls. You know, like... I don't know, like, would they be able, would they, like, explore Mr. Freeze? Like, I think that would be something that would be... Uh, no, Arnold ruined that. Okay, uh, yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but, like, Mr. Freeze himself is a really awesome character with, like, great, great backstory and everything. So, like, I don't know, Batman has such a great rogues gallery, you don't just need to rely on the Joker. Mm-hmm. Like, and so, um, like, Batman has the best rogue. I'd say, like, the three best rogues galleries um, for... Um, comic book characters would be Batman at one, Spider Man at two, and Superman at three. So, like I, I like those are all characters that you can you can pull so much um, in terms of their mythos, and um, you basically uh, can do so much with these with the characters and the villains. Like, and I think that's something that's a strength, a huge strength of DC, where they have such a rich history and such a rich legacy of characters, which also kind of does come back to was kind of like 
a curse at the same time with everyone kind of just comparing them to you know such as henry cavill's to suit superman to christopher reeve superman but you know all that but like in a way it's kind of like one of those things where i would love to see them introduce new villains and explore yeah. stuff we haven't seen i feel like the dc comics have better villains than the uh, marvel comics mm-hmm. yeah so that's the one thing i would say to you know make sure everyone knows that i enjoy i do enjoy dc comics and so i do think they have better villains it's just like warner bros is not really use, well, using well, well warner bros name. is under like the reason why you're seeing this whole shift and change is because there's been a change in leadership so at&t yeah. is essentially calling the shots now and they from what i can see and me, I've been super skeptical of Warner Bros. and everything that they've sure been doing. You are, are you sure you, you're willing to trust a phone company? <laughs> well, no, but AT, like, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, Apple. Apple has their own streaming service now. You know what I mean? Like, but they don't own a studio. No, but, like, at the same time, it's just, like, AT, like they're a multi, they're, like, a huge media company. So, like, they, like, will put people in charge, like... Jason Killar, who's the, they, so they kind of broke, they have like, they created a sister company for Warner Bros. called Warner Media. And Jason Killar is kind of like the new CEO of, of Warner Media. And I think they, they're basically in charge of like HBO Max. And so basically he has a lot of experience. I forget where exactly he came from, but he has a lot of experience with um, like streaming and everything and like the movie side of things. Um, so like, I, I think DC is in great hands right now. It's not under the original Warner Bros. regime. Like, most of the people who interfered with Justice League and messed up that movie are all gone, basically. Yeah. So, like, I, I think that Warner Bros., and particularly, like, AT&T, is, like, they're under great management, great leadership. They have a great direction and a plan for DC right now, um, which I love. And I am super stoked for the future of DC films and what they do. Like, I, I think, I honestly think that the future of DC films and like what they do is much brighter than the few, like in this next decade in the 2020s than the MCU personally. Cause I think they, the MCU kind of peaked with Endgame, And so now it's kind of like, they have like, they've got to build everything up again and yeah. everything. And like the fan favorite characters like Iron Man and Thor, I mean, Thor might, he'll still be around, but like Captain America. It should, it should have ended with in game. They're, they're, yeah. Like they're, they're, they're all gone now and stuff. But like, I mean, speaking of the MCU, just obviously we did, this got deleted from like the last stream, but like Rip Chadwick Boseman, you know, um, you know, we won't really get into that right now, obviously, but. Um, uh, I, I'm still upset about that. Um, that's why I'm in the mood that I am. Um, because I, <laughs> there was a lot of, there was actually a lot of stuff that we talked about, but yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think we, either of us feel like, you know, readdressing that, but like, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of one of, it's, <laughs> I was supposed to lay on my bed. Um, no, it's, it's kind of one of those things where, um, I was kind of burned out of the comic book movie genre and then, you yeah. know, the, the, because it was just like, okay, the homogenization of the of comic book movies seemed like that's the direction that everything is going. Everything's going to be the same and yeah. everything's going to be identical. And that's what, the, that's what the media is asking for. That's what fans are asking for. That's what Warner Bros. is trying to do, just trying to emulate the MCU and be like them. But I think that like going the multiverse route, I think that this, is def- this has brought me back and got me hyped for comic book movies again. Um, I, hopefully this, like the multiverse and Warner Bros. taking a lot of risks and letting directors do what they want to do. I hopefully that causes Kevin Feige and the MCU to take risks as well, because otherwise well, I feel like the MCU will kind of get stale. Oh well, no, he is taking risks. I mean, he's, he, he's taking more risks than anyone. Um, but I mean, like in what way? Like, cause I mean, um, like the, with regards to like the MCU and stuff, like, like he, he, uh, pe- people are still not He's, sure if they're gonna make Deadpool R-rated, and if they even no, want to make it. No, they are. Film. They came out and like, said that they are. They're going but to will it, not will change it. it. Will it? Will it be R-rated though? Yeah. No, they said they are not changing anything with Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds still gonna be playing as him, and they're still gonna. They, they said that the Deadpool will be its separate own thing. It won't be connected. It'd be because they're going with the multiverse route of the MCU that they have because they. 
that they kind of set it up and far from home, but it was a lie. But they're, that's what they're saying. It's like, okay, so when – like when Doctor Strange is ever like in, uh, like introduced or the WandaVision TV show, is, that's supposed to set up the X Men coming into their universe and so keeping some characters because they announced that the kid that played um, uh, what's his um, uh, so what's the speedster kid name in that one? Pietro. Not what? Like, uh, like Quicksilver. Great server. That's yeah. That's yeah. what I was trying to think of. Um, they, they announced that he's gonna come back and play his uh, his role in the Marvel universe. And so yeah, they're trying. They're setting up where um, Deadpool is gonna be his own thing, and like he probably kills off characters. Well, I mean, but what, the one thing is like the MCU doesn't really give directors creative freedom. Really, like Scott Derrickson left. Doctor Strange too. He directed the first one. He directed the second one because he supposedly wanted to have like actual horror elements in it, and yeah. Kevin Feige said no. Well, so that's the thing. I can, like, I can Ke- understand. Like Kevin, that like that's the little. thing. Like with regards to taking risks, it's like, yeah. like adhering to like this kind of like this formula that the MCU has kind of, and it's extremely successful. But at See, the same we time, do not want to give kids nightmares. We're a family friendly s- studio. No, and that's exactly the thing. The MCU is under Disney, and Disney yes. is very much like, oh, we just want to appeal to everyone and make as much money as possible. Yeah. Don't. So that's the whole thing. We'll have to get a huge you know, tangent on all that. But like, Does, basically, like. Doesn't Disney own Aliens now? Like the, I think so. I think so. so. <laughs> I feel bad for Scott. Um, oh God. Yeah. Well. But, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. Ridley Scott, like, I don't know. He, I feel like after like, I feel, I feel like the recent ones haven't really been up to par. Well, I don't anyway. mind Covenant, but yeah. That's but I mean, topic. like compared to like the first one, oh, and even yeah. the second one where like James Cameron directed that one, but like it's the movies haven't reached that level. I mean, those two have not been the same after that anyway. Yeah. No. Yeah, but like I mean, DC fandom I think was an awesome event. I believe there were like twenty two or twenty three million people that tuned in, or twenty three, twenty two to twenty three like like screens watching essentially. So which means probably even more people than that. Bigger Basically, than, that bigger than the Super Bowl. Okay, not bigger than the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl generate like over Super, like Super uh, well over lame. like a hundred million. Super yeah. Bowl's lame anyway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's so boring. I, I do it for the uh, the commercials, and those are even freaking boring. No, but basically, like, this could set a huge precedent for, like, what other studios decide to do for fan events. Like, you could see, like, like Marvel potentially having their own different type of, you know, online convention thing. You can but, see Star Wars doing that now. Yeah. And you could see, like, this kind of, like, could, like well, set no, a new Star Wars always, No, Star Wars is actually the first yeah, one no, that yeah, I, I know, but in terms of, like, online for everyone to access and, like, stream yeah. for everyone, that's what I'm talking about. Like, like, and having, like, basically be open to everyone. Because obviously for, like, Comic-Con, like, San Diego Comic-Con, like, that's only, like, okay, you have to pay for that and, like, only a limited number of people can go, and you'd have to, like, travel or, to that, to San maybe, Diego to be able well, to... isn't Comic-Con also live? I mean, they release stuff, but, like, they don't, like, stream it for free the way that, like, DC Fandom was. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they can make the... Well, maybe they can do where, like, they can stream it for free, but if you come to our event, you get something special, like a little, I don't know, statue. Maybe. Well, well I mean, who knows? We'll see. I mean, this was obviously done like this because of COVID um, and done online. What I think oh, I could yeah, do... That, what, that's what, probably what, the reason why. If, they, what, if there was no COVID, you would have to pay to go uh, do no, this. No, what I think that they could have done, though, that, and what people could do in the future is have it in person and be live streamed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like have like an a actual convention in person on like so that people can see but have it also be like yeah. okay here we're streaming it for the whole world to watch as well yeah if so. you come you get a little bit more info but if you're here and you get to it, be there in person like nothing yeah. will really beat that in person hype so but, you can get so. autographs and all that and so mm-hmm. um, so like have the panels actually be live instead of like pre-recorded stuff was ben affleck like at the event or like who? yeah no no Every in terms of like the Snyder Cut panel, so Zack Snyder brought on uh, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, Ray Fisher, and Ezra Miller. The only person who didn't show up was Jason Momoa. He was um, probably I, busy. I, I think he was. I think he was busy with something, or like he. I think with it might have been Dune. Maybe I'm not like, exactly like, sure. 
because like it's just like the whole weird thing with scheduling but like because fil- people- filming actually just got back in schedule i mean Jurassic world started filming a couple of weeks ago so he's probably doing filming with doom and all that uh no i mean i'm pretty sure doom is finished filming because it's supposed to come out in december they're just working on post-production but like when all this was recorded that was i think 2020 yeah it's coming out it's december 2020 as of now as, assuming it doesn't get moved that's when it's supposed to come out but basically like yeah i mean jason Momoa loves Zack snyder and everything so it, it's not like uh he wasn't there because it, yeah but no but like basically everyone showed up like ben affleck you know and i think that would have been a huge bit, even bigger surprise to people had not announced him as coming yeah. back as batman but well, then they would have ruined the you know robert all that crap. Yeah, Robert Pattinson, which obviously, keep an eye out for part two of DC Fandom on September 12th. They, it's Obviously, I'm not saying that it's a guarantee, but it's a very, I think it's a real possibility that they could announce Ben Affleck um, like an HBO Max show for him, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, th- we this actually turned out great, because it actually turned out longer. It actually, it, we're actually still recording. <laughs> Wish this ha- I wish this w- worked the first time, um, but I mean, I guess this, I guess, I mean, it's probably better off to make this its own episode fandom. I'll talk mm-hmm. about the topics that we did in our episode with, uh, with the nerd guests. Um, but I mean, yeah, this is fun. I mean, if you guys want this, if this does well, we'll talk about part two. I mean, you're actually the first person to come back in a back quick um, um, intertwine because you're at, you, our episode together actually did very well, which was awesome. It's actually, I think, the highest one uh, during the series, um, so which is pretty insane. So yeah, if you guys want to see Peter more, let me know. He'd probably be happy to t- come back and not talk about DC and fanboy. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for actually uh, doing this uh, with the problems that we had earlier. Um, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. Thank. Wish wish we could have still had kind of our little talk about Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Uh, and wish that would have been saved. But what can you do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But well, um, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me on, Austin. Yeah. Um, thank you guys very much for watching or listening. If you guys are on uh, my Spotify, which probably best if you guys go follow because it's probably better to listen to our voice and look at this. Um, but anyway, thank you guys very much for being here. And like always, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.